Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. Zum Wallet news. You're going to want it. Ripple Singapore, MasterCard, Ripple Visa. Will the PSP be rendered obsolete? We're going to talk about it. BFAT, Banker Association Finance and Trade. You're going to want it as they talk about bridges. And then we got James Wallace, Stuart Alderati on Coinbase, and John Deaton. No trial for the SEC versus Ripple. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, $1.12 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is off by 0.7%. Bitcoin, 27400 plus. Ethereum, $1,625 and change. Tether market cap is $83.3 billion plus. Number five spot is XRP at $0.51. Cents. It is off by one3 in the 24-hour and off by 3.5 on the seven-day. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you this very quickly here because we got a call to action for the entire XRP army. The digital asset investor, the goat of the XRP influencer community has been suspended on X and we need to get this changed in reverse because we know that he has not violated anything on this platform at all. If anything, he's just been violated and we know that we need to really make sure that Elon holds his promise that free speech is allowed on this platform. He has done nothing wrong. We ask that everyone as a call to action, take to Twitter tag X and at support and at Elon Musk politely to get his page reinstated. This is not right, ladies and gentlemen. We need to come together and show them just how strong this XRP army is. Now let's get started this morning. Link to, ladies and gentlemen, your access to private investing, 325,000 plus registered users and growing daily all you need to do is go register, sign up, and start participating with affordable minimum investments to private equity. What are you waiting for? Link2 has even announced that they intend to go public, and it's coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. You can get Link2 private equity. You can get all kinds of other incredible private equity on this platform as well, but you can't unless you click the link below the video and go register and sign up, so then you can. That's all you got to do. It's amazing. Check it out. Upcoming ZUM 2.6, shout out to Weed Say When and the XRP Ledger Labs team here will show the new app name, rebrand splash screen, and feature network switching straight from the home screen. This is exciting news here. Look, Weed Say When and the team over there are constantly doing things. If you remember, just not long ago, there were more trading pairs added as well to uh, fiat currencies. Things are moving quickly, even when you think they're not. I tell you that. Now, don't forget, I wanted to make this point very quickly. We know the news about Ripple getting fully licensed to provide digital payment token services in Singapore by the Monetary Authority of Singapore, which is also the central bank there. So this is remarkable news for Ripple. And I am reminded of what Bob Way said back in the 2019 time frame when he said, basically, you know, it only takes two. Well, we just got one. Now we need the second one, right? Where Then they can start doing business between each other, these different regions of the world, central bank level, and then we can start to see the other central banks missing out. And if they don't adjust and adapt, just like Christine Lagarde said from the IMF uh, chair when she was managing director, they will be cannibalized if they don't come and move into this new financial world with the new advantages of the technology like Ripple and the XRP Ledger and XRP Token. Now, with that being said, when I say there's one down, one to go, there only takes two, I'm not talking about price. I'm talking about use case utility. Price will take care of itself. I want to see the asset and the ledger get used for what its full-scale intended use is, and speculation isn't it. Use case utility is. That's why I'm so excited about it. Here you want to talk about more use case utility. How about this for a bridge? (coughs) Shout out to Riz. Existing relationships with Central Bank, MasterCard and Visa, MasterCard Partners, Ripple, Consensus, Fluency, and Fireblocks. (laughs) 
you know, in case anybody's wondering. This is from someone who is a banker who was at a banking conference and decided to share this on Twitter. We're very grateful for them to share that. And here's an ex-banker here who predicts that XRP will render PSPs and Nostro accounts obsolete, he says. And this is basically talking about payment service providers just like MasterCard, PayPal, and Visa. Now, what I find interesting about this is, is that I don't think payment service providers are going anywhere for a very long time. And the reason I don't feel like that is because they allow credit. Right. And we are still in a credit debt based society. And I think that's going to exist for quite some time now in the long term. Yes, I do believe we are moving towards a uh, asset backed system. And that is going to be, I think, a healthier, safer system. But until we get there, I think they've got a lot to say about what goes on in this space. However, I think uh, Kieran makes a great point about the ultimate elimination of the need for Nostro accounts as well. And here, if you look at this, you know, obviously we all know you could use XRP as a bridge asset instead of having to hold multiple currencies in multiple jurisdictions and regions of the world where your business or bank does business. And this can save you tons and tons of money. So that, I believe, is something we're going to feel quicker than we will on the payment service provider side, I believe. It'll be fun to watch it unfold. And he shares his thoughts here. I'm not going to go into those right now, but I want to keep moving. Let's step back to a larger level in the banking area, which is the BAFT, the Bankers Association for Finance and Trade. I want you to listen what this person says here. Shout out to Mr. Mann for this, where they talk about the need for a bridge to deal with bringing the old world of finance into the new world of finance. And, you know, let me play the clip here. It's not very long. Let me play the clip. Payment exactly what the DLPC is. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Scott. So, uh, you know, we've all heard of the failures of trade lens and we trade and Marco Polo. And uh, the question is why, right? I'd start off with Bill Gates. He made the statement, we overestimate the speed of change and we underestimate its magnitude. That's right. And that's sort of where we're at. Uh, what, what has happened over the last three, four years is now new building blocks have formed. Think of them as bridges from the traditional world of ERP, because data is important, needs to be secured, to this new world of Web3, from the traditional world of payments, wire transfers, to this new world of smart contract triggered release of funds, right? And payment risk, right, from the traditional world of law to the model law for the electronic transfer of records. These are all building blocks that didn't exist and to sort of traverse this new world, you need a vehicle, think of it, and that's the DLPC, that's how we see it. And we think what is needed is essentially an instrument that uh, is legal, uh, that allows for data to be secure, where you have complete control over privacy, and where you're able to effectively leverage the legal system for final recourse. And if you then sort of take that one step further, and you look at all the existing instruments, the EUCB, the letter of credit, uh, digitized invoices. So there's a distinction between digitization and, if you will, digital asset formation. And where the blockchain really comes in is in the formation of this digital asset. And where the problems really lie is having those bridges from the traditional data world to the new data world, from the traditional payment world to the new payment world, from the traditional legal world to the new legal world. You're there it is right there, right? And guess what digital asset has legal clarity that that particular portion of the decision of this case cannot be appealed? It's XRP, isn't it? It sure is. And when we talk and hear him talk about bridges, it is extremely important. Let's look at DeFi. DeFi in its history up until now, and I think we all understand, listen to this, uh, this video, that DeFi, decentralized finance, is the next iteration of finance and banking, period, full stop. Now, how banks are going to survive when it gets there and what they look like when they get there, that's another conversation for another day. But let's talk about where the vulnerability and the Achilles heel for DeFi has been. It's been large part 
in bridges. That's where the hackers get in. That's what's so exciting about Flare and Layer Cake is that the Layer Cake bridge is supposedly going to be the solution to keep hackers from getting across or being able to tap into that bridge from where your assets are to where you're moving them to the DeFi. And it's going to be very exciting to watch that prove out, no doubt about it. Now, the same thing exists here in the banking world to use a legal clarity asset in being able to transition from the paper financial world to this new world we're going to, which obviously XRP and XLM can play a huge part. As mentioned by Mr. Mann here in this BIS document that is talking about uh, the trust bridges and money flows here. This is extremely important to remember, right? The trust money uh, trust bridges and money flows. And it talks about Ripple, XRP, and Stellar Foundation as solutions to the marketplace for settlement asset-based and unbacked crypto assets. And then they talk about Strike and Bitcoin and Lightning Network as well. You know, I think we all know what's what in this particular thing without having to go uh, hard into it. But now, was this BIS? I'm pretty sure it was BIS. Was it BIS? Okay, so it was uh, uh, International Monetary Fund, excuse me, IMF. I didn't want to misquote that. It was IMF. Nevertheless, just as relevant there. Again, very quickly, understand that the XRP ledger is a bridge. M bridge is BIS testing of a multi-CBDC model with bridges. One of those bridges being tested is the XRP ledger and XRP token. And again, XRP in a M-Bridge situation is not the native token. The native token is CBDCs and stable coins. And M-Bridge, the XRP ledger in this particular instance, is using XRP when necessary, not mandatory, but when needed or desired for the best transaction. Take a listen. Right, it is. It, we're using the same technology that is with the XRP ledger. What would the token would be the CBDC, right? So the central bank would actually create their own token, a digital euro, a digital dollar, whatever the mark the market is, um, and that becomes the digital asset. As the, so that becomes the digital asset. Keep listening. The native um, coin. The native coin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, where where XRP could come into play potentially is when you're looking at cross border. CBDC. So when you have a digital dollar and you have a digital, you know, real, you know, or digital digital pound, you, know, you obviously need to have some some way to interact cross border. Yeah. So I think the BIS call this a multi CBDC model. Um, the, the, uh, one of the ideas is you use a sort of a neutral bridge currency to go from one to the other, similar to the model I explained earlier, where with our on demand liquidity. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the you know, but the core offering really is is not XRP. There's no XRP involved. It's it's the native token is the CBDC. Exactly because it's about using the CBDCs, which are not because this way XRP doesn't infringe or harm, right, or challenge the financial system. It complements it. That's the key. You only use it when you need to. Because there's so many different jurisdiction, jurisdictions out here that have different uh, set of governances and rules in place based on their, their way of living and their culture and their laws, right? And then you could really use XRP in between those things as a complement. Look, I, I tell you, what's interesting about this to me is the fact that, first of all, Ripple Adorati tears uh, the SEC a new one. Uh, in this uh, overview of the Coinbase lawsuit, which is baseless, basically explaining that its claim from the SEC lacks citation or support. We don't even need to read it. But the reason I'm so excited about it is, is because look at where we are with the case now. The case is still hanging like a gray cloud over this asset and Ripple, the company, even though we are down to the SEC has the choice to continue forward and to sue Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson individually, which is despicable, right? But that's what they can do, and that's what's on the docket, and that's where they're headed if they don't settle. Then they could also drop everything, drop all charges right now, and then come back with a general appeal. But what would they be able to appeal? 
because Judge Torres released her motion denying SEC's ability to do an interlocutory appeal. So why would they even try to general appeal? Because you can't introduce new evidence or a new argument. So essentially, Judge Torres, by responding back to this motion of interlocutory appeal and denying it, did so with such explicit language that it would appear. And there may be something that we don't see, so we got to be prepared for anything. But it would appear that the judge is aware of what they were trying to do and has put down the verbiage that makes it extremely difficult, if not impossible, for the SEC to consider dropping this and coming back with a general appeal of some kind. But we can't put anything past the SEC because we know how they are. However, John Deaton says here, essentially, he doesn't believe that they're going to go to trial. He believes that it will have to come to settlement because they're not going to want Ripple to bring Jay Clayton and Bill Hinman and Mark Berger and Valerie Hispanic and Amy Starr and everybody else from the SEC dragged up on stand to see what's really been going on because we all know the drill. Take a listen. They could be talking settlement right now. Mm. I'm not saying they are. Sure. Right. But uh, but they could and um, <laughs> they don't want to try the case. So mm. I don't think a trial is going to happen. Mm. OK, so they that's could. your prediction uh, that a trial is not going to happen. Yeah, I don't think a trial is going to happen. They're going to lose. Mm. And um, and uh, do they really want all that Hinman stuff and the drama of a trial? And I mean, a trial in this case, Tony, would take a month. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, they're going to, Ripple would want to call Hinman, Valerie S., Amy Starr, uh, Hester Purse. I mean, yeah. I'm just I'm just naming names, right? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, they might want to call John Deaton. Who knows? Uh, uh, Jay Clayton? Just, huh? Jay Clayton, maybe? Like, I mean, it's just, it's going to be a big, big, long, lengthy, very, very expensive trial. Mm -hmm. And and if your chances are slim to none, why do that, right? Now, if they weren't fighting Coinbase and Binance and, and doing all the other things, maybe it's worth it. Mm -hmm. But don't you need those resources to fight the other cases? Yeah. And so that that's what I mean is that I don't – I don't think there'll be a trial, but I could be wrong. Well, you know what? And he believes that he doesn't, or he says he thinks there won't be a trial. I always believed that we would go to Supreme Court, but with this latest denial of the motion and hearing the feedback from John Deaton and others out here, it does look like it is getting down to the, 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 the wire here for the SEC. They don't have much room to move. So, look, I hope now for a settlement, I, and we'll see what happens here. And I'm sure that the SEC will make it obvious they're going to run it out to the last minute, whatever they do, because it is clear at this point the SEC doesn't have a case. They never had a case. But it hasn't stopped them from trying to drag this case out. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. Be prepared for anything. Head on a swivel, ladies and gentlemen. But one thing I do know is imagine what it starts to look like with adoption once this case is officially over. I'll catch all of you on the next one.